Hello everyone. Today we're going to make something that requires black paint and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs and little bitty eyes. Wonder if you can guess. I just have the beginnings of one here. Maybe you can guess as I work on it. I took an egg carton and cut it up. You see here I have the remains of my egg carton. Egg cartons cut with the scissors, but they take a little bit of hand strength, so perhaps a grown-up you know, or a big kid needs to do this. And some good stout scissors. You're going to cut the egg cups, trim them down, go around and around and around. Okay. It doesn't have to be exact. Not for this craft, it doesn't. Once in a while, you, it does because you're going to put two cups together. That is trickier, but we're not doing that today. So you're going to need, for each one of our little friends that we're making, you're going to need one egg cup. I'm going to move aside the ones we don't need yet at this point. Here's the one that I have, have begun. I painted the inside black and I took a good sharp needle, beware of good sharp needles, and I poked four, one, two, three, four holes on this side and I turned it around to the opposite side and put one, two, three, four holes on that side. Now I'm going to take my eight pieces of chenille stick and I'm going to Thread them through. This one's going to go in hole one on this side and through and go out hole one on the other side and I will try to hold it in such a way that you can see what I'm doing. Sometimes the chenille stick kind of gets bent at the end and then pushing it through is even trickier but just keep there. Keep fighting with it. It will happen. It will go through. Now, since our friend is not going to walk around with legs that go straight out like, right, like a, the arms on a scarecrow, okay, I'm going to grab him, grab him by the toes, and I'm going to use my chin, and I press up against my chin and curl his legs. And he ended up, whoop, that one didn't curl. didn't curl. And now, when I separate them a little bit, he has nice, creepy, crawly legs. Okay, now surely by now, you figured out what we're making. Now, he needs to be black on the outside, doesn't he? So, let me move those extra chenille sticks because I don't want to get paint where I don't need paint. I'm going to use my little, little drop cloth. And I just used one of the paint cups, or uh, egg cups for a paint cup. If you don't have paint brushes at your house, number one, go get some. You're going to, you're going to wish you had them on a number of occasions. And uh, if you want some but haven't gotten any yet, um, cotton swabs work. Okay. okay, now I'm just going to paint our friend all over. The less paint that you use, the sooner your friend will be dry and ready to play with. I need something to hold him down and I don't want to 
leave a fingerprint on top. So I'll hold him down with this needle. I'm going to be poking a, a hole through there anyway. It takes a little figuring how to hold him, how to wiggle him, so you can get all the parts painted that need to be painted. Okay, the fact that he's gray to start with helps. Imagine if he was pink or green or one of the other egg carton colors. Okay, my friend is all set and ready. Now, he's going to need to sit and dry for a while. The alternative, use a clothespin, hang him up someplace, and with the clothespin to hold him in place, blow him dry with your hair dryer. Sounds a little silly putting your craft up on the wash line, but it works. And as you can see, I'm just, well, maybe you can't see, I'm washing my hands with hand sanitizer because I'm all mucked up with paint. Now, I have a nice stretchy piece of elastic, I believe. Just you know. You can use nylon thread, you can use black thread, you can use elastic, but I like this that's transparent because it looks like a strand from a web, doesn't it? I tied a loop at the top so our friend will be able to hang up. I'm going to thread the bottom end through my nice sharp needle. Yes, I am. There we go. And I'm going to go down through the top of his head. Right straight through the middle of the top of his head there. And the needle's going to come out between the legs. And to make life easier on yourself, instead of just trying to tie an, a, any old knot, I'm going to tie, once I get it pulled through, I'm going to tie the knot, tie the other end of the, you know, the web, to his legs, that, that bit of legs that goes through and is hidden inside his body. And I'm going to get my hands all mucky again because the paint's not entirely dry, but oh well. Okay. I'm going to just set him there. Boy, I did get mucky. This is why if you have the time to do it, and I hope you do, you can let him dry first and then go back and add the hanging string later on. Okay, but I'm going to tie this fast to his legs on the inside. I have done this before. It does work, honest and for true. It takes a little doing. It takes a little patience, but it does work, and it is the best way to make sure that he's secure. Um, I would guess that perhaps, I haven't tried this, but I would try it, uh, perhaps a paper clip, My, or some, some or maybe a tiny, tiny little binder clip, that's the tiniest size, might hold it in there too. Uh, I haven't tried those, but it is worth a try if tying knots is just absolutely not your thing. There. Ha ha ha. Done. Turn him up. Right. And if the top of his head got... The paint on the top of his head needs a little touch-up. Well, give, so give it a touch-up. That's fine. That's easily done. There. If I hang it up like this. Boing! Boing! You see his, his web's elastic. And then the last thing that 
I need to do. Haha. -ha. I think I actually have a dry spot on the front where his face will go. I'm going to open up my little box of googly eyes and just with a little liquid glue. Just your basic white glue is fine. Um, my experience tells me white glue, li you know, liquid white glue works better than glue sticks for gluing on little plastic eyes. If by any chance you don't have um, little plastic eyes, you can always take a piece of white paper, punch a hole with a hole punch, and when all is glued and dry, take a black marker and do in the pupil. Okay. I'm trying to find two eyes the same size and all that there. And if your eyes if, if they are so tiny that it's hard to pick them up, wet your finger, press your finger on top, it'll stick to your finger, and then set it on the dot of glue. Put the glue in place on your friend's face first then put the eye onto the glue. Putting glue on the back of a little eye that's so small that you wouldn't even find it on the if you dropped it on the floor is a nuisance. So put the glue in place first and put the eye onto the glue spot. And then let the whole thing dry and by this time, of course, you know you have a spider who, of course, is turning his back on you. Stop that. Be a polite spider and turn around. There. There he is. There's our spider. Yeah. Okay. And you can make whole bunches of these. And if you don't want to try to hang them up, because putting on the hanging loop is, you know, can be the hardest part, get some of that uh, web, the artificial web and put it up with your Halloween decorations and just tuck some of these friends in among the spider webs. The, uh, the wire inside the chenille sticks and the fuzziness of the chenille sticks will just grip it, no problem. You won't have to worry about how to make them stay. Okay. So there he is. He's still wet. I'll need to let him dry. But there's your basic Halloween spider made from an egg carton, something that most people have on hand anyway.